Hey, welcome back. In this video, I just want to introduce the concept of the modulus of a complex number. So if we have a complex number z that has some form that is a plus bi, just like the other videos, then the modulus of the complex number z, we put these basically like absolute value bars on each side of it. Um, we write this as the square root of a squared plus b squared. And if you remember when we were talking about conjugates, uh, where we have the conjugate of z, we, where we basically just switch the sign for the imaginary parts, so we would have a minus bi. If you multiply z times the conjugate of z, uh, you actually end up getting a squared plus b squared. So this is basically also just the square root of z times its conjugate. And something interesting to notice here too is that this value is always going to be positive because of these, uh, these squares in here no matter what a and b are. And so if the inside is positive, then the square root of it will also be positive. So if we just go and work through an example, it's pretty simple. We have, let's say if we have z1 is equal to um, 2 plus 3i, then the modulus of z1 is just going to be equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is equal to the square root of 4 plus 9, uh, which is equal to the square root of 13, which is a positive real number. If we look at another example, maybe we have z2 is going to be equal to, let's say, negative 4 minus 2i. Then the modulus of z2 would just be equal to the square root of negative 4 squared plus negative 2 squared. Bring that over. So we have the square root of 16 plus 4, which is the square root of 20. And uh, you can even simplify this a little bit more. We have square root of 4 times square root of 5. So it's basically, we can reduce that to 2 square root 5, which is another positive real number for the modulus. So if we go with our geometric interpretation where we plot the numbers on the complex plane, then we'll see that the modulus is basically just the Pythagorean theorem for hypotenuse, which gives us the length of z. And if we imagine that um, basically the, the, the imaginary part of these numbers was equal to zero, so let's just say that z1 was only equal to its real part, a1, then the modulus of this case of z1 would just be equal to the square root of a1 squared. And same, if z2 was just equal to its real part, a2, then its modulus, z2, would just be equal to a2 squared. And this is just the notation for the absolute value of a1. And this down here is just the notation for the absolute value of a2. It just returns basically the positive version of the real number. So the modulus of a complex number it can sometimes be referred to as finding the absolute value of a complex number. And that's pretty much all there is to say about modulus for now. Um, the reason why we're looking for the modulus is basically it finds the length of, of the complex number when we represent it as a vector. And right now we're basically plotting it in Cartesian form. Um, but we'll see in the next video if we find, if we know the length and we can find this angle, then we can also express it in polar form.